Hello. This video we will talk about the last part of the multiple regression. Basically, we will talk about the test of the joint hypothesis. That means we want to test whether beta 1 and beta 2, beta 3, up to beta k, they are all equal to 0. Second, we, will, we are going to talk about the testing of single restrictions, whether the beta 1 is equal to some kind of value in the regression model. So let's get started. Do they the first thing we need to do is to test of the joint hypothesis. So in the single variable regression cases, we also have the case that we set up the null hypothesis and saying that beta 1 is equal to 0. And the alternative one is beta 1 not equal to 0. After that, we go to the sample and look for the data. So we look for the beta 1 hat. This is the standard error. So we can do t-test p-value or the confidence interval so just take the t-test as an example if I do the t-test for the beta 1 to see whether it's significant or not so this is equal to the value of beta 1 hand minus the your your decided now hypothesis value derived by the standard error after you calculate the t-statistics you will get that this is equal to 2.7 12.71, not 2.7, 12.71. So you compare with some benchmark model, say the 5% level, 1.96, you can see that the t value is greater than 1.96. Therefore, it shows that this beta 1 hat is statistically significant, different from zero. But in the multiple regressions, if you do the t, t test as usual, so let's take a look. The test score is some value minus 0 0.29 times STR. STR is the student-teacher ratio. The larger the ratio, the, the more the students or the less the teacher. Plus 3.87 the expenditure on education minus 0 0.658 the percentage of English learner. So if I do the T test for this beta 1 hat, what I get is 0 point, negative 0 0.29 minus 0 divided by 0 0.48 the value I get is negative 0 0.6 in which the absolute value of t is more than 1.96 so it seems that okay this is not statistically significant that the value is different from 0 so should we ignore this these parameters the answer is maybe because in multiple regression you need to think about all the variables as a whole that means you need to do whether maybe these two add together is significant or these three add together are significant. You cannot just ignore either one of them. Therefore, you need to do the hypothesis testing for joint hypothesis. So in multiple regressions, you need to do the so-called F test to see whether they are significant or not. So you need to set up the down hypothesis. Say this is a two variable case. The null hypothesis is, is that beta 1 e and beta 2 equal to 0. And the alternative on it is beta 1 not equal to 0 and or, or beta 2 not equal to 0. Well, if beta 1 is not equal to 0, it violates the first assumptions, the null hypothesis. And on the other hand, if beta 2 is not 0, it violates the null hypothesis. So how to do the how to do the F test? So if you set beta 1 and beta 2 equal to 0, so you are having two equations. The first one is beta 0 hat plus beta 1 hat x 1i plus beta 2 hat x 2i plus beta 3 hat x 3i. Okay, if I do the null hypothesis that beta 1 hat and beta 2 is equal to 0, so it is similar that we have two equations. The first one is the original one, and the second one is beta 3x3i only. Okay, so we are going to see that if we add two more variables from only one variable, will, will it con contribute to a better estimation? So if the contribution on a better estimation is sufficiently large, it means that adding these two betas or adding these two parameters is good so we give a name for the first one which is called unrestricted 
equation. And for the second one, we call it restricted because we restrict the beta 1 hat and beta 2 hat equal to 0. After that, you need to calculate the so-called F value or F statistics. So the, the, the formula is SSR divided by the restricted one minus the SSR of the unrestricted one derived by the number of restrictions. So in this example, the number of restrictions is 2. Then derived by SSR of the unrestricted one derived by n minus k of the unrestricted one. So k here is the number of regressor minus 1. So in our example, the number of regressor in the unrestricted equation is 3. Okay, so k is equal to 3 here. Well, sometimes you cannot find the value of SSR. Then you can use the exactly same another definition. You use the information of R square. So the F test, F statistic can, can also be computed by the R square formula. This is equal to R square of the unrestricted one. Minus the R square of the restricted one. Derived by Q, the number of, number of restrictions. Derived by 1 minus R square of the unrestricted one. And the remaining is the same n minus k of the unrestricted equation and minus 1 okay so after you calculate the f value you compare with the critical value based on some table okay based on the f statistic table well let's look at our example again so actually this this equation are some kind of true data. Okay, we're going to see that whether the STR and the expenditure are important. So I do the similar equations. So we keep the constant and we just keep the beta 3 hats here. And we find that, oh, the first equation, the R square is 0 0.4366. And for the second equation, the R square is. 0 0.4149 and we have 42 sample so if we plug in these informations into the F statistic definition so this is just equal to 0 0.4366 minus 0 0.4149 and Q here is equal to 2 because we have two restriction we restrict beta 1 heads and beta 2 heads to be equal to 0 then derived by 1 minus 0 0.4366 and finally divided by the number of sample size 42 minus the number of regressor in the unrestricted one so there are 3 minus 1 so we calculate the value of f is equal to 8.01 okay after that we go to the f statistic table so you can look for the f statistic table in the google easily so you will find something something similar to this so you look for the number of restriction here now we have number two two restrictions so you look at two here and you can see that your 8.01 f value is greater than 10 percent five percent or even one percent level that means beta 2 and beta 3 are jointly significant so these two are also important in the estimations okay so after that we need to do one more hypothesis testing well sometimes you are, you are not just testing whether the beta 1 or beta 2 is equal to 0 sometimes you will have the special test slide okay I'm not just saying that I'm I don't want to test whether beta 1 equal to 0 I want to see whether beta 1 is equal to beta 2. That means the partial effect of x1i is equal to the partial effect of x2i. So the alternative hypothesis is that beta 1 is not equal to beta 2. So how can we do this hypothesis testing? So uh, we like everything 
that is equal to zero, right? We usually test whether beta one equal to zero or beta two equal to zero. So in this case, there are two positive value or negative value, which we are, which is not good. So what we sh should do is first put the beta two to the left hand side, and set it beta one minus beta two equal to zero. To be our null hypothesis, that means you need to turn something from beta one to beta one minus beta two. So let's look, like a take a look at this example. If I want to change the beta one to be beta one minus beta two, what can I do? Okay, just use our own trick. We minus beta two x one i artificially. After that, we add beta two x one i again. So we minus this and plus this and keep the equation unchanged. Then we copy the remaining one. Then you can see that beta one minus beta two can be factored out, right? And the remaining for the x two i, this is equal to beta beta two times x one i plus x two i plus u i. After that, you just need to test whether this is statistically significant or not by using t test. Okay, because this is just one variable, you can use the t test. So, one problem is that does this equation suffer from the perfect multiple collinearities problem? So if you forgot what is the perfect multicollinearities, you can go back to maybe two videos before and you can check the, the definition of perfect multicollinearities. So here you can see that, okay, if I increase x1i, so this will change. So it seems it is far away, the no perfect multicollinearity def assumptions in the multiple regressions. Well, actually it is no. This does not suffer this problem, because take a look, if x1 i increased by one unit, then y i will increase that by first beta one minus beta two. But here in the sec in here we still have x1 i here, so if x1 i increased by one unit, it will also increase the value of y by beta two. Well, you can see that beta one and beta two can be cancelled each other. Okay. So, go back to the basic. When back, when x one i increase by one unit, y i just increased by beta one, right? So I just artificially change something from the from the basic equation that is okay. So the final result should be should be also okay.